very short, so we can start. Let's invite our guardian angels, our mentors, and the mentors of this house, asking for inspiration to receive the teachings from the spirits, the good spirits. There are all around the world inspiring us to be a better person every day. As we get together here tonight, let's unite our thoughts and intentions to get out of here feeling that we are part of this movement of transformation of the earth. And let's be the change we want to see in this world. With this, we would like to start our study. Thank you, so be it. So be it. Okay. And he's going to see you again. Thank you. Um, and you guys. I'm glad you guys are here. So, um, so this week is exciting. We're still reading the book, What is Spiritism? But we're working on chapter two. We're just starting chapter two this week. Um, so last week we wrapped up the conversation with the priest, and that was a great conversation. I learned a lot from it. Um, um, and now we're, we're on to chapter two. So chapter two is just Alan Kardec um, just uh, speaking about you know, elementary notions of spiritism. Um, so it's very, very much like the basics of spiritism. Um, but as I, was, as I was going over it, he does say a lot of things I thought would um, be great topics for discussion, um, especially with if you guys have opinions. I don't know. Opinions are great. <laughs> so the very first line in the in the chapter, Alan Kardec says, "It would be a mistake to think that witnessing a few." extraordinary phenomena would be enough for certain disbelievers to be convinced. So what he's talking about is like when, when we have a spiritist, you know, mediumship meetings where people like evoke spirits and will get messages from spirits. Um, and, and what he's saying is if somebody is like brand new and they see that, that that might not necessarily be enough if, if they don't believe in spirits for them to suddenly become a believer. You know, um, so what I wanted to ask you guys is, you know, for the people you guys have been coming around for a while, what did it take to convince you? And for the people that are, are new, you know, if, if you're new here, um, I'm sorry, I don't want to assume that you're, you're new. I, we haven't had a chance to really talk too much. But what would it take to convince you um, that, you know, you're, that a, I guess we're, we're talking about spiritism, we're talking about that we get messages from spirits. <laughs> yes, we. The visitors, they we give the you know the visitors. If you're have the if you're comfortable talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I, okay. Well, I think um, we can get message from from spirits in all types of ways, um, in nature, um, in dreams. Mm. Um, I think they connect to you like um, symbols, animals. Um, I, I do, I believe in mediums and psychics. Um, I've been to uh, many uh, voodoo ceremonies uh, where um, the spirit uh, does um, take over the person's body and um, they transform into like a whole different personality. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've seen it in person. <laughs> okay, yeah. So were you convinced? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So before you <coughs> saw it, let's just sort of to put it in the context of what we're reading. Mm -hmm. Before you saw it, did you believe? Did you not believe? Were you just kind of curious? Okay. Were you skeptical about it, or or did you just have like a really open mind before you saw it? Or um, I've always believed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was okay. never skeptical. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Maggie. I mean, are you are you a believer? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I definitely, I definitely am, and I guess, I guess it just depends on. Um, I mean, there, there are certain cultures that are more, more like open mm. to these types of things, and and um, and they just they're more accepting. Uh, 
not necessarily of of the spirits, but more accepting of the fact that they know that they exist, and more accepting of you know of, of the possibilities of you know messages that are like you know some of the examples that she gave. Um, so I mean, for for me, it's it's always it's never been like. It's never been like you know. Um, we do like you know. There's nobody in my, in my immediate family who was like a med- it was like a you know a strong medium or like you know goes out and like does you know ceremonies or anything like that. But it's always been like an understanding that there's another realm that exists you know apart from from this one. I, I like what Faye said about being like from nature because we keep saying spiritism like not just spiritism like spiritism doesn't have a. a like a monopoly on mm-hmm. spirits, you know, we're just one, you know, so, but, but we, they, they say it's a force of nature, like it's, you know, if it exists, it's not because it's an accident, it exists because, you know, God created it, or it's a, it's a natural force, so it's not something, so I, I just like <laughs> I said that, you know, um, that it's, it's not something that can be, um, um, like we can't actually force spirits to speak to us when they don't want to, mm-hmm. like they have their own free will, but, but they they are in a, a natural phenomenon. So as as we study nature and study the world and, and we're talking about quantum physics here a lot, mm-hmm. it's it's becoming more and more accepted that that it's a possibility by science. And then you know the, the evidence is kind of becoming more and more accepted. Mm-hmm. Where where someday if if science if science can actually prove. Hello. Welcome back. How are you? Thought you quit. No, I'm just kidding. Get hugs. Hugs all over. This is Dr. Wabish. Oh, okay. Hi, hugs. I get a hug. <laughs> Whatever you like. You, you can sit in the best seat in the house. <laughs> best seat. <laughs> okay. It's a good interruption because I was talking too much. So what do you guys think? Okay, one of you. Cold? It's blowing up. Mm-hmm. I guess this 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 seat here you have less. Yeah. That one is cold, yeah. Um, I like that one. I'm gonna see you over there. Mm. So we're talking about what does it take to believe that the spirit exists and the spirits exist. What if, does it take to believe it? Yeah, if, because uh, Kardec is saying here that a phenomena um, is not something that will convince somebody uh, who is... is He's a disbeliever. Who is a okay. disbeliever. Yeah, somebody who, who's, who says like spirits don't exist, if they really believe that, and they mm-hmm. see a, a mediumistic meeting, they'll just the most moment. likely assume that they're faking it, you know, or, right. or, or something, or there's some kind of a trick going on, or you know, the, the writing is coming out is like they they already had that planned out. Or, yeah. you know. There are a lot of people that think that just because of the phenomena, people will become believers, and uh, the priest said that, and the critic also said that. Why don't you just oh, and the skeptic, the skeptic too said. Why don't you just show me the mediumistic meeting and I will become a believer? Well, the critic okay. actually said, show me the meeting so I can prove that it's right. Right, right, right. So. Okay, one side. No, so I, I'll, I'll second Faye on, on what she said on this one. I, same thing for me. It, I, I just feel it is that way. And I don't... Actually, I haven't really been to many, some, yeah, if, if we count on Dr. Pedro, yeah. I've seen some, yeah, you've some seen, phenomena. Yeah, you've, you've seen I plenty, have. plenty. I have, yeah, okay. Yeah. But, but before I had, I didn't really need to see anything. It's just something that I think it's natural. Um, like, you know, I don't know you mm-hmm. still. And you're mm-hmm. here, and we're talking, and mm-hmm. it's natural. Yeah. It's so. It's same thing with the uh, with spirit, I guess. It's just you know I have some uh, sense, sensorial limitations uh, myself. But like you know, somebody who is um, 
blind or deaf as uh, sensory limitations in the physical world as well. So that's how I feel it, that's how I see it. And I, um, the phenomenon is not something very important uh, or critical in that sense for me. I can only go by myself. I, you know, I went from uh, skepticism to, uh, like you said, you know, it must be faking when I, <clears throat> but I, my own experience is I've, I've become a true believer now. I, uh, really, it's very, very real to me, but I, and I still haven't experienced the phenomenon, the uh, bad moving tables or some other, uh, uh, and I don't have to because it just makes a lot of sense to me having read the uh, stuff of Kardec stuff. That was that was great, and meeting people like yourselves who are so dedicated to it, and you're certainly believers, and I, <laughs> I, uh, I just wanted to learn more. So it, it's like going to school and taking a course, not just to pass an examination, but to get what they were saying. You know, it's, uh, and I did, I get it now. I mean, I would love to see a phenomenon, you know, to, it would be very interesting to me at this point to, uh, to see a phenomenon, but uh, it was not essential. Uh -huh. It is not essential for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like what I heard. Um, I'm also, um, I would use Faye's word to say that I always believed. When I read the Spirit's book at the age of 16, I said to myself, it's not Kardec telling me this. I know this. Mm -hmm. I know this is true. And nobody taught me anything. And I agree with the, what many says that there are some cultures that are more open to this. And I would say that it's because the spirits, they choose to go to that culture because they need that so they are, they're like, you know when you get to the bottom of the well and you say, that's it, I want to change, I want to do something about this or that in my life. And then, hey Reggie, and uh, this or that in my life, I, I believe I am one of them, that I said, that's it, I want to be a spiritist. And I chose to uh, be born in Brazil, I believe that in my heart. It was a choice because I said I don't want to have any kind of a distraction or any other country that take me out of this route. I want to go to Spiritism because I love it so much, deep in my heart, and nobody ever taught me that. I went, I went to the Spiritism by myself. So when I read Kardec's book, I was like, I know this is true. I know deep in my heart. And when I went to Spiritism, I was studying Spiritism four years, and I was still Catholic before I said, I'm, I'm moving to Spiritism. But just like you, like I do, I'm like, I know this is true. <laughs> there is no need to convince me. And I know uh, that some people, they disbelieve in basic things that they, you show, no, uh, even worse. I, I have a family member, he is a scientist, and I've shown to him a scientific evidence, and he says he doesn't believe. So, I totally agree with Kardec, <laughs> if you show the phenomena, thinking, oh, if I show you this, you will believe, don't waste your time, because that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. Uh -huh. So yeah, um, that's like, bit, can, can someone practice Catholicism and still be a spirit? Yeah, yeah. That's Absolutely. Because you said you had, that you stopped being a, uh, you gave up Catholicism for yeah. spiritism. So I, that's why I was questioning. No, I, I know. There's deep wisdom within yeah. those. Oh yeah, because I certainly, yeah. I, I think Judaism is, uh, <laughs> it, it really is, uh, yeah. I understand it better now than I did before. Yeah. How, how, how yeah. is the esoteric? Yeah. Gnosticism would be the esoteric Christianity. I have friends. They are. Uh, they go. They study a course in miracles, and they are spiritists. I have friends. Mm -hmm. They are. 
they go to church, Catholic church. I have uh, people that are part of my groups on, on Sundays. It's Portuguese only and online only. And she told me she's a Christian. She is a Christian and she watched my, my videos the, about the, uh, the, spirit, the, the self knowledge, it's, it's inner knowledge uh, based on spiritism. And she watched and she said, I am Christian and I watch your videos. So, yeah. Yeah, we talked a lot about that in the last chapter with Alan Clark and the priest, um, mm -hmm. saying that, that you know there's a lot of people who are very you know uh, religious and they practice it from their heart. So they're not um, they're not doing it just to impress somebody or going through the motions like they, somebody told them like you need to kneel now and you need Good to pray point. this way or do this way. They do it because they want to do it and they, mm -hmm. they feel it. You know and this, they, they feel the sentiment. So nobody asks them to give up their practices or beliefs, um, but. But they, you know, we kind of shed new light on. It's for people that don't just stop at the surface of things. I mean, if we have questions. Um, that's where that's where spiritism kind of comes in and, and helps us answer. And spiritism isn't really a religion. It's actually a philosophy. Um, so, um, Alan Kardec says that we count among our adherents people of, of every different faith and belief system. <laughs> it seems like he pulled the higher teachings of all the religions, and he's, he's presented it in a way. But it's very, very similar to all the teachings. Mm -hmm. You really, you start going out and yeah, he's, learning he's, them. He says, it's all like, the same. he says, in the essence, all the major religions yeah. preach the same thing, like love one another and, well, <laughs> and like and Gnosticism. The definite not is knowledge of the heart. So and you have bits of that, bits of Catholicism, or bits of Kabbalah, mm -hmm. esoteric, oh, beautiful. Yeah, I mean, and they, I mean, it's, it's what the the spirits gave us, and you know, we talk about where the spiritism came from, you know. The messages of the higher order spirits, because we, we throw out all the messages that were inconsistent or or you know didn't make sense or, or you know when they take the, the higher order messages they they keep like only the most um, you know <laughs> it, it, it's like it's like the more complicated it gets the more simple it gets um, yeah it is very simple um, but then so I mean we have all that we talk about from one line <laughs> the first line <laughs> in chapter two. Um, so what we're talking about is people that come um, to the meetings to witness the phenomena. Um, and then, so the next, one of the next statements he makes is that uh, people usually come with a preconceived idea and a negative stance that keeps them from making a serious and impartial uh, observation. So I, I just thought maybe I'd throw this out there was, was as far as preconceived ideas. It was how many times have our own like judgments that we've made close the doors in our own lives like like we have an idea of something how it's mm -hmm. going to be and and we sort of shut the door on it oh. and, and <laughs> our emotion yeah has, has really i mean burning I, bridges and that type of stuff yeah i'm guilty of it too because yeah. i mean before i found spiritism i mean this is like i i would i had shut the door on a lot of things and i just said you know i don't want any of this i i had to like go through a lot of pain <laughs> in order to come back to to like having some type of belief um but I didn't know if anybody actually wanted to talk about that. Uh, a lot of times people don't like to admit that they've made mistakes before. <laughs> True. But um, I'm like a champion of mistakes. <laughs> uh, what do we do to stay open-minded? Humility. Forgiveness. Suffer. Suffering? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Suffers is this hard suffering and and, uh, it's and, and, you, and and all you have is your closed mind to deal with. So it kind of opens your mind up to relieve the suffering. Mm -hmm. Keep on doing the same thing, you'll get the same result. Very so, good, very good. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. true because a lot of us. So true. I want to say I don't know what part of the spirits book I read it in, but a lot of us only evolve through our own pain and suffering. Yeah. yeah. That's what it's, Buddha said. It's a like choice. The suffering, yeah. It's a choice. It's a choice, too. but the majority is still unconsciously or consciously we're still choosing the pain to be our teacher. Right. There are people that are choosing to smoke a cigarette to teach them how to breathe. That's, that's the only time that's that the best, they that's the way to learn, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Through the pain and suffering. They they <laughs> die. when they when they need a break <laughs> to breathe, what they do, they pick up a cigarette and they go like, 
That's, they need the cigarette to teach them to breathe. And that's how we are teaching. We are choosing, as you said. The are we choosing, or is society choosing for us? We are choosing. I, I believe. I believe we are. I am choosing. I am one hundred percent responsible. That's why I'm thinking about opening my own spiritist center where we allow smoking. Right? Why not? Oh my gosh! I slayed a room, but ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what if we? What if we are not suffering? What do you mean? What if they're not suffering? What if, yeah, what if I'm not suffering? So you've chosen it. You you're don't, willing to be a close you, minded. Yeah, you're willing, willing to, to be, be sleeping. Minded, God bless you. You know, what can I say? No. no, I mean, what if I'm not suffering? How do I stay open minded? I'm well, not you're not consciously right. suffering. Yeah. Not suffering is bliss, basically, in a sense of. But one day, but one day, you will wake up. We are open minded. This mm -hmm. is the point. Okay. I agree. If I, if I found out that you were in a state of bliss, I'd probably come and try to like stop it. <laughs> yeah. I would do something. You would, you would want some of Somebody that. would, you know. I keep it, I keep it secret. There's there are plenty of people out. that would try that. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Like if you got it, I want it. Yeah. I'm gonna take it. If I take it, nobody can. Nobody can. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in the next in the next breath, um, Kardec talks about, um, he says disbelievers will ask questions or raise objections. Um, he's, so he says when you're talking to them, it's nearly impossible to respond to their questions uh, because everything that they ask <laughs> takes prior study. Um, exactly. So, so I just wanted to throw that at you guys. How important is prior study as a, as a study? Um, Someone asked me about the gospel, the gospel of Allan Kardec. Why did he has to write a gospel for him? I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, I've read, I've read. So the person didn't even, even read the title correctly and wanted to confront me like, why is that that Card Alan Kardec wanted to write his own gospel. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I saw it. I saw it. He has a gospel. I'm like, no, 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 no. There is a gospel according to Spiritism. Have you ever read it? At least try to open it. No, 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 no. But I want you to answer. I'm like, no, I am not going to answer because if you if you don't even have a chance to memorize the title of the book correctly. How interested this is for you? Not interesting at all. Yeah, so you know someone is interested if at least they pick up one of the books so you can discuss with them. If you, if you don't know what I know, or at least a little bit, how can we have this bridge of discussion based on what? Mm -hmm. Based on what? It's what you suppose? It's a roadmap. It's pointing us to a, a better understanding of who we are, our existence. So yeah, he wrote, a, he, he reinterpreted basically what he feels the best of all of the religion, the best of Christianity, the best of Buddhism, to his perspective. Who? The Gospel according to the Spirit. Yeah, yeah, the Gospel according to the Spirit. No, no, no. No, the, no, no, no. Well, well it has to, you have to have a... a, a, a within this philosophy and those are the constructs which are very important have you ever no I in? haven't I haven't but we, we get little bits of it that we're discussing here I believe and mm, no? not that but, but that's the, not what I saw there the basic thing is that uh, Kardec he didn't write or interpret this was inspired or, I believe right by not, no no, no. Spirits. Alan Kardec wasn't a medium Oh. He was not a medium. He did not get anything from the spirits. But he worked with mediums, He was a right? researcher. He worked with mediums. Oh. And right, there right. were and the mediums that that helped to write down the message, one of them, two of them, or three of them, they were 14, 16 years old. The, the mediums. He's also, uh, he's got a fine line between heresy, the Catholic Church, there's a lot of forces that want to so he has, he has to balance a lot of things in terms of what he's created this philosophy. No, because he didn't write. He didn't have to balance because that's not his. 
when you read the introduction, right. he explains that this is not this is not a result of his works. He just organized the work. That's why we call him the codifier. Is that yes. what to say in English? What does that mean in English? The codifier. Yeah, they call it the codif Let me see. codification. Because all it is, is a, is a, Let is me a, see if it, if it means the same thing in English. Yeah, all it is is an organization of it. Like exactly. It's, it's like it's similar to, you know, when when science created Scientific the research. animal kingdom and they separated down into genus and species exactly. and, and these different levels. Right. And yeah. It's basically what he did with a lot of these information is he he like he, he the spirits book is is in four parts, right? right? The first causes, uh, the moral laws, um, and so he did a very good job because if it was, I was just thinking, if it was me getting like right. 1,019 different pieces of information, how like, in the hell would That's I ever crazy. <laughs> like and they into, asked, four, into yeah. four topics, you know? And the group of people that were part of this group that decided to study this from the beginning of the phenomena with the turning tables that used to be a game in parties, and they, they, they said, let's see what's going on here, seriously, on a serious level. The group said they were judges and physicians, his friends, very serious people. They said to Kardec, you are going to organize it. He goes like, why me? So because your profile, you're a researcher, you have this profile that it's perfect to organize these works. I had a question for you. For me? <laughs> For you. Okay. The, about the 16 year old mediums that Kardec was using. Uh huh. Now, who were these mediums uh, channeling? To whom were they? Uh, were they yeah. contacting high, uh, ascended masters uh, and, and being able to. Um, to be able to repeat what the ascended masters like Christ or Saint de Germain uh, were telling them? Who were these the, these youngsters that uh, were, who, who, who were their, uh, who were the Patrick records or something? Since they gave him the information. They they all, back. All Since my yeah, teacher yeah. here just gave a speech about this, can you please answer this question? Well, I can't really answer specifically. Oh, no? Because okay. Because I'm sure that information is probably in review of spirit of... I can. Probably. But, yeah, I, I haven't read But them. you did speak about this yeah, briefly. Yeah. You did, and you yeah. Well, I mean, not specifically, but I just I just know that Kardec spoke to many different mediums, and he did things in a specific way that he would send them questions. And when he did work with local mediums in, in Paris, where he's from, um, he would give them questions like on a piece of paper, and he would stay outside of the meeting because he knew that like spirits can read your thoughts. So a low order spirit will actually just read your thoughts and answer the question the way you want to hear it and, and flatter you and, and tell you what a great person you are and say all the things you want to hear. <laughs> and and I've experienced this myself. So um, <laughs> He's asking about what kind of spirits answer so, questions. So well they they had to be um, high order spirits. Um, ascended masters. Yeah. Well and that's that's a sort of. It's just a, a nomenclature. A term, it's just yeah. a. But it's just a name. And, and spirits, and they 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 talk about nine or ten different levels of spirits. Right. You see. Um, you, but you know, and they, and they talk about the. About. Um, next to like pure spirits, below that is like high order spirits. I want to say, and right. they. Um, um, they were not perfect they, spirits. They were a group of spirits. And, um, but he tests. He tests them. When he gets the, yes. the answers back, he he does tests. He tests uh, the consistency of the message. Mm -hmm. He tests that the message um, uses like good ascended type of language. Mm -hmm. So so low order spirits will actually like curse or say coarse things in their in their messages. Mm -hmm. um, low order spirits like to say that there's somebody like somebody that you would be impressed to hear a message like, oh, I'm Plato, I'm Aristotle, you know, they, or they would say something like that, like say that this message is coming from somebody that you want to hear a message from. So, so usually like a high order spirit will not actually reveal its name. I'm not right. saying all the time, but, right, but, correct. Um, <clears throat> but it, a lot of times it'll, yeah. it's like, it, it's more important the message than the, content, than the messenger. Yeah. Yeah. You know. If you see the spirits book, there is not one single name of the mediums. And remember that Kardec was in contact with around 1,000 spiritist centers. 1,000. Did he study theosophy with Blavatsky? Because that, that's that era. 
where all this Eastern and Western philosophy were coming together. I was, uh, can I have this book? Where's Theosophy? Theosophy is Sorry, the study Steve, of the divine God. No, I'll give it to, back to, back to you. Like, I'll give it back Buddhism, to you. All the Buddhism, Hinduism, and like the Buddha, and like Christ. Yeah, they brought it to Western societies. All Eastern philosophy, how it teaches Let's go back to here. They brought it over to Western philosophy. And they organized it. Because exactly like what Kardec says exactly. Exactly. Century. exactly it's actually Thank perfectly you. with our point Go ahead, is, that, Steve. is that you can't really ask like a simple question about spiritism exactly. without like talking about the entire subject exactly. fitting into every little little detail um, so so we really encourage people like to, to pick up a book and, and start reading it um, if you, I, I, I mean I, I don't want to like go too much you know I, I love talking about myself um, <laughs> right I'm my favorite subject but I don't, I don't know, I, like how, because for me, because we're talking about um, how important is prior study to spiritism. Exactly. So when I came Thank here, you. I actually it was like a really big coincidence that I came here and I had just been to Brazil. I didn't really know what spiritism was, mm. but I, I actually work about a block away from here, and and somebody told me about the center. And since I was going to Brazil, they were like, oh, you should check it out. And and when I was in Brazil, I happened to pick up a copy of the Spirits book just because it like some people were talking about it. It was like a really like a big coincidence. Mm -hmm. So when I came here I had the book and like I showed up here not knowing that like that was the book that they read here. It was like a big, big coincidence. So when they started talking about spiritism, I just kind of kept my mouth shut because I'm saying like I don't really know anything about this. I have nothing to really say about it. Like I'm just sort of like an open book here. So for me it's like I, I, I was interested so I, I started reading and I started reading from page one. And I read like all the way to the end of the book, you know, and I can tell you too, like it was, it was complicated. It was a lot of information and some of the things I wasn't really so curious about, but I just kind of like kept going through it. And, and so I could at least feel like I know like a little bit about what people are talking about in these meetings. Um, but that was kind of my story, but I don't know if other people really do that, <laughs> you know, as far as like come to the meetings and actually um, pick up the book and start reading it. You know, like I, I don't really know if, if other people are interested. So, so we have a lot of people um, that are kind of like they, they sit at the edge and kind of dip their toes in the water. You know, but then I don't know if other people are actually interested in, in reading. Um, and I don't, I don't know if it's something like this is a discussion topic, but I, you definitely see like the difference between um, the people who study, you know, when they come to the meetings, right. and, and the people that don't, because. Uh, and it's, it's not that I want to like judge anybody, you know, but um, but it's like when we're talking about stuff and and um, the people that don't really like make the effort to study, um, and, and I'm not talking about people that are new to the center, you know, I'm just talking I'm talking about people that have been maybe coming here for a few years and they're not really like studying right. and right. they ask questions, <laughs> you know, and, right. and you, you hear the questions they ask and you're like, well, that's really so basic. basic. Like you, you know, if you read the Spirits book, you you would get it, exactly. you know. Um, and the reason why is, is it's exactly the reason why the, the spirits they came to co to connect with us to communicate with us. The reason why we need to have this spirit of open mind and learning, so we can live a better life hmm. without out of suffering. And that's the reason why it is important to learn. So when you learn for for yourself, you will, at the end of the day, you will be able to say, this I like it, I, I take it, I'm going to use it, this I don't, this is BS, I don't care. But if you don't have this, it's like being living in the old times of the, the church that you have a shepherd and someone just saying yes, 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 yes. And here is the, is the group that we ask questions, we question everything and that's very important to question everything but if you if you don't know anything how are you gonna question yourself even yourself or the other and Kardec always has this posture like you gotta learn everything if you want to be a spiritist you gotta read everything and learn everything so your mind will be you will not be fooled by anyone that comes and say Oh, I am the spirit of the planet X, and I have a message for you. And you know, uh, tomorrow you will wake up and you will see your kitchen. 
and then people go, oh my God, tomorrow I will see my kitchen. This is so amazing. I'm like, why? So the message is that people get, get so basic. Do you really need to be full at, at that level? So Spiritism is inviting us to go to, to transcend the level of shamans, the level of voodoo, the level of, the level of we, what we have been playing around since the beginning of the, the story, the history. And we don't want to play around anymore. We want to know what is behind the phenomena, what's going on in the brain, neuroscience, what happens to the body of the medium when it's channeling? Mm -hmm. Why we are getting those messages? What is the reason? Where are we are heading to? Where are we are going? So it is very important. I definitely, I'm, I don't know what would I be, not here, if, if I didn't have this inspiration from the Spiritism. I agree with you. It's very important. Yeah, I mean, it's not really on our topic. I don't really know what our topic is. <laughs> I mean, I can just say that, like, really, like, the study I did, when I started reading the Spirits book, and it would talk about things, because I was attending mediumistic groups, and like, outside the Spirits Center, like, the, you know, mainstream type of New Age, if that's, if that's even a thing, <laughs> you know, I don't, the stuff you find in, in like, uh, uh, what's that, Natural Awakenings book, you know, <laughs> things yeah. like that, and, and, you know, I was talking about it, I started questioning, and I'm, I'm like, reading the stuff, I'm like, wow, if, if what I'm reading is true, and I'm not saying, like, at the time, I was like, I don't know if I believe it or not. If what I'm reading is true, like this, some of the things I'm doing, like, like they're not really, they're not really working. <laughs> you know, it doesn't really matter. So, so it really made me start questioning, like, what, what was I doing? And and I didn't like uh, have to give up everything. Like nobody here told me like, you got to do this, you can't do that. You know, like nobody here is really, um, right. like, <laughs> you know. We're, if if we're truly spiritists, we're like non-judgmental, you know, and we're not we're not here to tell people what to do, um, if we're you know, <laughs> but but um, we do the best we can, but um, but over time it's like it's like my priorities have changed a lot, you know. I mean, I could talk on and on and on about how much my life has changed, like <laughs> from from a little bit of study. Me too. Um, um, do you feel liberated, uh, empowered? Yeah, I mean, um, beyond the constructs of the dogma. Because he mentioned thought, well, right? Yeah, because... The rules and regulations that the church really put on us. And you really, like... Alan Kardec himself, like, actually influenced me a lot. Like, actually reading some of these conversations he had, the type of questions that he asked people. Yeah. You know, instead of... Like, because before, if somebody would tell me something, like, oh, I, I channeled my um, my neighbor's dog, and, and he gave me a message that he doesn't want to be fixed. You know? <laughs> and I, I heard that before. I... I I saw this in the meeting. Mine was a dog. I wouldn't want to be fixed. Said, there's nothing broken around me. Why should you fix me? I know. You know this is what this I like is, that. This is what the dog said. Yeah, in the, in I the believe group. it. And uh, and and before that, it'd be like, well, this is some crazy stuff I'm hearing, but I have nothing to really say about that. <laughs> like, let's move but on. But society says we have to fix it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not here to talk about the dog. I'm here to just just talking about like crazy messages you hear in in um, your question in, in media yeah. and I started to question things. So it really helped me. Um, and not that, because before, I, and really before, I was like a lot more cynical about things. Like, I just disbelieved really? disbelief things. Now, you wouldn't believe it. So but, now reading that, oh, you wow. have a different perspective. A lot, yeah. On a lot of things, yeah. yeah. You know, I was uh, reading the, uh, the stuff, <coughs> and Carter made the point uh, that uh, if someone doesn't believe that they have a spirit, that that mm. spirit, then... then don't waste your time trying to explain spiritism to it. Because if you don't believe that you have a spirit, that it is separate from your personality, then forget about it. Because that, that, but to, to, to study that spirit, you know, yeah. that's yeah. what spiritism is about. But if you don't believe you have a spirit, how the heck can you explain it to somebody that, that doesn't believe that they have a spirit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, it couldn't make more sense. Right. <laughs> you know? He said that. Like, made that very clear. Uh, I mean, and I, I'm, I'm like really guilty about when I first started studying spiritism, I started to think I was actually better than my non-spiritist friends. You know, that, <laughs> that, I mean, like, these guys just don't know, you know, <laughs> like what I know. You know? <laughs> and I, I, I knew that was wrong. It is possible. I'm, I, like, I'm sorry, but the, it thought, is the thought kept popping up in my head, like, about, like, people and, and, like, and what they were doing. I'm like, I'm like, 
like, oh, that's too bad they don't know. Absolutely. But you mean about the, <laughs> you mean you mean about knowledge only or morally? Like I don't know. Like for some reason, I thought that they like weren't going to go to heaven because they weren't spiritists. You know, like it's really, uh, we'll, really we'll, funny. We'll call it purgatory. Yeah. yeah that, <laughs> So you I, get, I don't know. You get it right. I, I mean, I, I like it, it's just it was just one of those. Maybe it was because of my upbringing or something like that that the thought kept popping up. I knew it wasn't a correct thought. It's just it was just it was there, and I was like, well, I have to deal with it, <laughs> you know. But I, I really kind of thought that like I had I had some good stuff, you know. And I really mm -hmm. want to give it away too. That's but the funny thing is that the more you learn, the less you have that thought. Mm -hmm. So Ouch. you know, contrary to. <laughs> It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't really pop up so much anymore. Yeah. It was like it, this was like a couple of years ago that I kind of like it kind of really was like on my mind a lot because I was still like. Kind I of had the same thought the in the beginning. The same. I <laughs> thought I was better than I was special. I thought so because uh, people were living like mm -hmm. sleeping in their own body, just mm -hmm. living a life, just automatic kind of type of life. I felt the same way though like uh, when I first had my first meditation experience though. Like my first experience, I, um, I tried meditating a few times and could never really get it mm -hmm. until a friend of mine gave me a guided meditation on a CD mm -hmm. and that was what helped me like actually get into that whatever that theta state or, or whatever it is you know where I actually meditated for the first time with a guy's voice guiding me to do the breath work and, and things like that. and. Once I got that, it was like all of a sudden I had this big awareness, and I wanted. I thought like it's not that I thought it was better than anybody. I was just like, you guys need to do this. Like all my friends, like you got uh, yeah. I made copies of the yeah, CD for everybody, there. and everybody threw it away. Being there, you, know? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta <laughs> see this. So just keep searching. So I guess I, I'm a keep habitual, uh, <laughs> a habitual. I don't know. <laughs> what what point? What item are you? What's well, number one? Yeah, one well, number one. Oh well, okay. Um, have to study a little bit more. Yeah, maybe next week we'll get on to number two. Okay. So we're actually, yeah, because <laughs> we're actually, we're actually, it's 8.45. All right. Um, so it's actually time for us to kind of transition over into our, Perfect. Okay. Into our next thing. I don't know, I don't know if I should like make announcements now and then just um, maybe close down our, our broadcast. If you something. want to, um, just or if you want to close at nine o'clock, okay, we can stop at nine o'clock. Yeah, let me know. Okay. I'll so now we're going to turn it over to Cynthia and we're we'll also right. reading the Spirit's book. I'll give you this to you and I take this. So last week we were watching uh, two movies and we were talking about, um, we are talking about spirit and matter, right? I'll give this to you. Hold on. I'll ask you to read. So is the question 33 in the beginning? Then at the end, I'll show you the, the videos again with uh, Michio Kaku and, uh, and the other one. I forgot the name of the scientist, but anyways. Okay. Huh? Perfect. Yeah. Question 33. If you... Um, if you can read the question and the answer twice, please. Okay. <clears throat> so this chapter in, uh, in the Spirits book, it's called uh, The Properties of Matter. So this is basically Alan Kardec um, giving questions to, I guess, mediums. And then the mediums are asking the spirits, and the spirits are, are answering. So he's basically, this chapter is trying to find out what actual like matter is made out of and how we, how we perceive it, how we understand it and uh, like their explanation of it. Many thank you for saying this. So Kardec was adopting the method of mesmerism. It's uh, induction, it's hypnosis, nonverbal hypnosis. Or daydreaming? So, hmm? Is it like daydreaming or no? No, no it's like lucid. somnambulistic kind of. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are in a state of trance. Mm -hmm. they, the it's medium a, is. The medium. The mediums. In the, the medium. Okay. So <coughs> those were uh, mediums that we call uh, we call automatic uh, writing or mechanic <coughs> writing, mm -hmm. which is has no control mm -hmm. over their hand. They have no control. So and those as well were the, those questions went to almost 1,000 spiritual centers around the world, 
and he was gathering all the answers and the answer that was the simplest, the most concise objective he published. Right, so, so what she's saying is, uh, so she said earlier that Alan Kardec was in contact with a bunch of different spiritist centers. Mm -hmm. So part of the, the science and like, he, he kind of like, he kind of like took this realm, this unknown realm, and kind of like applied like the scientific method to it. Mm -hmm. So what he did was, he, being in contact with all these different spiritist centers, he had like um, a certain amount of questions which were all the same, and then he would send them out to all the different spiritist centers, and they would, they would all ask the same questions mm -hmm. to the mediums, and then get their answers. So he got all the answers back, he, you know, compiled them, analyzed them, and then he kind of like got the truth out of it based on, you know, basically hundreds of different, different answers. Okay. And so it wasn't just, you know, he was asking one question to one person and getting the answer. That, okay. that wasn't what, that wasn't Very what he was point. doing. Very good point. So this question, this question was, um, can the same elementary matter uh, undergo all possible changes and acquire all properties? Um, so basically, just to give you a little bit of background, he was, he was just talking about um, asking like what matter is, and um, like we understand like an atom being like, you know, like a, you know, protons, new, uh, neutrons, and, uh, you know, electrons, and he was asking like, are these all the same, or do like, they all come from different things, and basically the spirit said it all comes from one, like, elementary particle that we have no, like, concept of right now. Right, and back then, that was the best word he could use in our days. Through quantum physics, we have the knowledge that there is the smallest particle they call the string right. theory, which is the connection of everything. But let's not go too deep in that. Let's see what the spirit says. Could it be like one consciousness, that oneness, that one consciousness? Uh, not oneness. really. It's a it's a type of matter. It's mm -hmm. elementary. Okay. So the, so the question again: Can can the same elementary matter undergo all possible changes and acquire all properties? And spiritual replied, yes, it is this fact that is implied in the saying, everything is in everything. So in other words, Kardec asked, if this elementary particle is getting different forms and be in different things, in different levels, and that's why I was showing the video that that's exactly what science had the indivisible particles that could not be divided. But there were like many, and that's why the, the string theory helped to unite all of them. So the spirits actually are, they agree with the quantum physics saying that there is one that takes different forms and they are connecting everything that is in everything. Is that what you understood, Manny? Right. Yeah. What would you say? And just to kind of like to get everybody on the same page, it's there's a lot, like we mentioned it earlier too, and it's it, there's a lot of um, I don't know if you're familiar with like quantum, like mm -hmm. physics and like you know quantum theory and all the mm -hmm. things in that whole, but it, it's funny because like we're making a lot of advancements in that field and like we're we're building new you know devices and ways to detect different you know things in the in, in the a a atmosphere and a lot of the things that we're finding, um, it's kind of like it's coinciding with like. A lot of things that we don't understand, mm -hmm. like in the in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. So string theory is kind of it's kind of like how kind of like what he was kind of alluding on. Like it's not like it could be called consciousness, but it's kind of like how everything is connecting and like you know it's vibrating at you know when something vibrates, it'll like it'll affect you know the entire like universe or like mm -hmm. it'll affect all matter. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's just it's just weird how how like. The, a lot of things that we're finding out in quantum, quantum physics, it's, it's actually like it's starting to make a lot of sense, yeah. especially to, to spiritists. I'll, I'll show a, a little video later on that will be easier for us to understand. Yeah, and and there's a, there's another thing too is like we, we have there's like four like fundamental forces in the universe like you have like gravity and you have like mm -hmm. electromagnetism which is responsible for like, like electricity and, and, and magnetism, and they're they're trying and one of the things that they've been trying to do is scientists for a long time have been saying that these four major forces that are responsible for everything that happens in the universe it, it's all coming from one from one thing and they were they've been able to to combine three of the things yet but they can't combine they haven't found a way to combine gravity into it yet so this is kind of like this is kind of like you know it's it's, it's on the same point it's saying that everything is coming from the same the same place everything is like the same prime in, in, a, in a previous question it said everything is the same primordial element 
Um, Seems like their energy, energy force is creating motion, mm -hmm. getting us to move the way we do. Everything is moving. Everything mm -hmm. is moving. Yeah. yeah. It's it's kind of, it's kind of like the ocean. Like if you if you see like one wave of, of the ocean, the ocean is all is all one thing, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if if you see one wave of the ocean, the entire ocean is making that <coughs> is part of that wave. It's not just like you're seeing like one wave, you know, that's separate from the ocean. Like being, that's very good. You know, like, so see, even even if you do something like you know, and, you, and it's right or wrong or whatever it is, or you you know, you have a beer, like you are doing. Like right now, you're doing what the entire you're doing what the entire universe is doing. Mm -hmm. Like right now, me talking, like the entire universe is talking right right now. You know, we're all. Mm -hmm. That's good. Wow. Yeah, I'm that's Hindu. Wow. That's I'm impressed. impressed. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Re read so, the note because I want to know your I want to know your opinion about the the right. answer. So so um so the answer again was yes. It is in fact it is, is implied in the saying everything is in everything, and then they go on to explain. Oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, and all the other masses that we see as elements are merely variations of one primordial substance. As we have found it impossible to arrive at this elemental matter other than as an intellectual deduction, they appear to be elementary. We may therefore continue to regard them as such for now. So that, thing that's a is, note from Kardec because of the, okay. all the other questions that received. And so I, what do you think, Manny? Another thing too is like the, the spirits don't aren't don't always give you like 100 percent of the answer because they we're not necessarily we won't, won't be able to comprehend it, mm -hmm. you know, I guess so to speak. So sometimes they say we will we'll therefore continue to regard them as such for now because we're not necessarily ready to right. we'll, we'll understand. 1857. Okay, so this is the answers that, that he wrote down in 1857. Wow. And, and now, now yes. we right. got the both. <laughs> The, the the boats, yeah. boat, the, his boat, his his boat. boats on field, you know, and they was describing this. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah, the Higgs boson is, is the is the the newest elementary particle that's been discovered. I think it was discovered in 2012. Mm -hmm. And that field that the, uh, the okay, okay, perhaps yeah. it is so similar to what. Uh, right, right. Yeah, it's, it, it is consistent with everything it is consistent. we keep. Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, we keep discovering. And Let's keep in mind that we have a large group of peer, is people in the world that are waiting for the moment that they can go against anything that are in Kardec's books. Let's keep that in mind. So we have, and this is positive for us, so we have vigilant people that are waiting for anything that science proves and goes against spiritism, they will say, told you so. So this is good that after 157 years, after the publication of this book still is consistent with the findings of science. Go ahead, Mike. Cool. Okay, so this is so part of the same uh, question. It says, this theory appears to support the opinion of those who acknowledge only two essential properties in matter, force and movement, and who regard all other properties of matter as purely secondary effects varying according to the intensity of the force and the direction of the movement. Um, this opinion is exact. We must also add according to molecular arrangement, for instance, that an opaque body, like a dark body, that may become transparent and vice versa. Do you know any opaque body that become transparent in our world? Yes. No, like no. that we can see. Oh. I was thinking about it this week. Oh, um, my welding helmet. <laughs> it's an auto darkening helmet. It's not. It doesn't become opaque. But I mean, it, it could if I. But it actually, you know, it's 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 relatively clear until it receives the oh. this the, the the welding light, which you're not supposed to look directly into, and it gets very dark. So you can yeah. stare at the welding. Yeah. Or different yeah. states of matter. I mean, as you raise or lower the vibration or temperature, matter changes. It's opaque. You know, water freezes. Yeah. And Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. All and one said last week, what was it? The yeah. window of the... The windows on, on the nearest airplanes, sure. mm -hmm. you know, they go, uh, they go transparent or... In the sun, they turn dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sun, just, like glasses. Yeah. You just press the button and, yeah. and it's the same window. And it's true. All it matters move, even glass. Glass over time, over centuries will just, uh, it moves. Mm -hmm. Old, like old glass from 18th, 15th century. You can see it bubble up. It's it's flowing down with gravity. Mm -hmm. Or about like a like a cloud or like fog. If you're mm -hmm. seeing it from far away, you can't see through it. Yeah. But if you're walking through it, you can mm -hmm. you can yeah, see it in front of you. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay. Um, so the next question, 
um, is do molecules have a def def definite form? Um, the answer, of course they have a form, but it cannot be assessed by you. Okay, so in 1857, what was the smallest particle known by science? Not even atom, right? Because atom was not yet proven. And there? The amoeba or something like that, or a bug? I saw a microscope, microscope, the regular microscope. No, the smallest yeah. particle? I, I believe they could see molecules. In the 1850s? A cell, maybe a single cell. They had so. microscopes, they didn't have a body. I don't think so. They didn't have an elect molecules? electron yeah. microscope. Molecules, yeah, cells, molecules. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, talking talking about, about, he's talking about carbon and nitrogen and oxygen. But it was still well, a sphere, you know? No, no, you could see, you could see, the, you thought, uh, he's saying, he said before that they thought those were uh, primordial uh, par uh, elementary particles because they couldn't see beyond that. So, mm. so okay, carbon is one, and oxygen is one, right? And and then years later, uh, in in uh, concordance with with, uh, no, it's not. with what they're saying, they discovered that uh, you know those were made of atoms, and then the atoms made of uh, protons and electrons and neutrons and and so on. Uh, and we haven't you know, uh, the spirits say in I don't know what what the question is, where the question is, but they say that we're very far. Um, Not yet, but yeah, they will say. Well, they will say. Okay. They will say that we are very far from the. Far from finding that. The smallest particle, but they said that that we don't have access to the yet. Right. Now the Hold that thought, please. Just let me close the nine o'clock. He needs to close the, the video. Okay. Go ahead. Oh right. So if anybody's <laughs> watching on Facebook, just remember we have magnetism workshop this weekend. July 22nd, 23rd, Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Come to the center, um, learn about magnetism, uh, mesmerism, it's the sister science to spiritism uh, for healing. Light workers and your wine. Yeah, it's very interesting. Energy healing. If you come to the workshop, you can come just for education. You can come if you want True. to actually practice. Yes. Um, you, you can come for any reason. Um, and if you do come to the workshop, then you would be, you know, eligible to, to give right. classes here at the center. Right. Um, so and it's uh, the the value. It's like really, it's amazing. It's thirty dollars for both days and with food included, breakfast, lunch, and morning afternoon break. I'm coming just for the food. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'll be here. If so, you have any questions, contact us. Yeah, I'm Steve McPherson. We have Cynthia Kapkanchi. Um, you can you can message us because our, our names are probably linked in the video you're watching, uh, or send a message for our Spirit Society on uh, the Facebook page, so it'll it'll come to us. You can get through us in any number of ways. Um, we also have a meetup group. We have a WhatsApp group. Contact us if you want to get in it. All covered. Um, if you want copies of the literature, we we have them available for download on PDF. Right. Um, so you just have to contact us, and it'll open a lot of doors for you. <laughs> so. Um, um, other than that, we'll be back here next Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Uh, we also have lecture Wednesday night, 8.15, yes. which is here at the Spirit Center in Pompano Beach, or you can watch it live on Facebook. Hands um, healing on Wednesdays, too, and it's free. Tuesday night, 7 p.m., there's also meditation free here at the Spirit Center. Everything's free, except the food. Uh, <laughs> so so uh, and, and if you want any more information, just contact us. Thank you very much. We we'll hope to see you again soon. Sorry, guys, for the break. Thank you, Steve, for closing. Okay? Anyone would like to add anything to that or keep going? It's pretty complicated. Let's go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the question was, again, uh, do you want to just have a de definite form? The answer, of course, you have a